and I think it it just it puts the organ it puts us organists and the organist instruments on par with for instance violinists and, and pianists who can stand on a stage and we can clearly see what they're doing um, we have to do tricks like that to show people what we're doing because if not then we'll just be hidden hello Janas hello Petra nice to see you lovely to see you too tell me where are you based I am uh, based in uh, Aarhus in Denmark I'm in Denmark Okay. And that's why I have this uh, beautiful poster behind me. Oh, lovely. <laughs> that's beautiful. And um, But tell me, uh, and were you born in Denmark? Yes. Yes, I was born in, in Odense, uh, where Hans Christian Andersen and uh, Karl Nielsen are from. Oh, okay. Oh, wonderful. And... Um, but now I'm I'm so intrigued about uh, because I saw you on Instagram. I saw you play. You are the organ an, an organist, and um, you make it very uh, look very cool. What you're doing? <laughs> yeah, I've I've realized that that you need to show people what we are doing to to make it to make it interesting. Honestly, yeah. at least to to people who don't know the organ already and uh, and i i travel with equipment to show people what i'm playing when i'm playing concerts so i always have a, a big screen with me etc oh do you okay so you you are consciously doing that of, um because this is something that i realized that for me growing up in the church this is where i associate the the organ with church music and in the church and um and of course and i've also seen that there you play an organ but but it's not like a church organ fixed it was uh, I've, i saw a video there where you have an organ actually on stage is that something very common it is uh, it's common in concert halls at least and okay. uh, typically you will you'll have to to be able to have a, a portable uh, control of the organ on the stage for instance if you're playing with an orchestra but also as you see for for soloists because people can actually just with their eyes see what you're doing instead of being hidden hidden far away or behind pipes yeah because um uh, this is also something that we don't always realize, but and, and I've re uh, uh, heard this from pianists as well. If you have an instrument like a violin, it's your violin and you take it to concerts. But you have to adapt to every organ that you play on if it's not because it's not your organ always. So is that also something uh, difficult for you? Yeah, definitely. It's... Uh... It, there, there are multiple aspects to that. I think one thing is that you can't just have your program. Maybe if I was a violinist, I would tour with uh, Sibelius and Mendelssohn's violin concertos, perhaps, and some solo works by Bach. But if I'm an organist, I can't just have like one program I'm playing everywhere because some organs will be suited to some music and some organs will not. So that's one thing. And then you have uh, the whole the, the whole getting to know the instrument part where you want to have some hours to get to know how does this sound in the room is this too loud uh, compared to how it sounds here if i go uh, and listen in the church is something different and then also you have to get used to the the physical aspects the ergonomics of a certain instrument can be difficult sometimes you realize oh I, I can't sit comfortably on this organ because the distances between stuff but what was it about the organ that fascinated you in the beginning so i used to sing uh, in, a, in a choir a local choir in the church where i lived and uh, i think i always looked at the organ and then I'm like, oh, this is interesting. I had this very, I still have this interest for electronics and mechanics and, and stuff like that. And I always wondered, oh, how does this work? And so whenever I, I had the opportunity to play an organ, I, I did that kind of like, oh, can I, can I try this? And, and then when I was, I guess, 17 or 18, I actually chose to try and learn the organ by, by playing it for a year and see what happened. And as you say, the, the rest is history. 
Yeah, and but do you have to have some basic piano? You know, do you have to be able to play the piano to be able to play the organ? Yeah, it 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 it's not the same, but it's the same. Some some basic stuff is of course the same. The more the more you play, the more the newer the repertoire you play is, the more it's it's in a way the same. I've I've played some list on the organ, and that is very pianistic, and you need to also practice that a lot on the organ. So I think you do need to have a bass technique when you begin, but you also need to adapt your technique because the organ is it's much more and on off when you press a key than it's oh you choose the volume the sound uh, i think you choose that more when you choose what stops to pull um and then when you press the key there's not a lot usually you can do differently than to just press it and a valve will open and the pipe will speak so you need to do a lot of tricks to make phrases sound great and to make the music come through because it's it's very what we're doing is very mechanical I think. Okay. Well, it sounds, uh, I, I always think it's so complicated because your coordination also have, has to be uh, good because you're also playing with your feet. Yeah. It, it, it's a bit like you, you've, it feels like you've split your brain in two when, you, when you've learned to play the piano and you've learned to read two staves and then you add a third for the feet when you try and, and begin to play the organ and i remember remember that being quite difficult at the beginning i remember sometimes my, my foot would just move from left to right just in confusion of like where am i going now how do i yeah. find the next note well i saw that uh, you play um some pieces you know on these um reels that you posted there's some pieces that you play quite a bit just with the feet is this just to show um how it works or is it are there actually pieces that have bits in the where uh parts in the where you just play with the feet i think uh, it's definitely a bit of both because i don't want to post mm -hmm. a reel where i sit uh, totally still and just play a bit with my hands i think uh, essentially you need to do something that's interesting to people and that catches people's attention on Instagram, for instance. So, yeah. but I have these pieces, for instance, the Bach prelude in D major prelude and fugue that I play a lot for concerts because it's an entertaining piece, but it also has these parts, as you see, where I play pedal solos and there's a large pedal solo in that piece. And it's always fun to play because it, it, it adds a bit of, of drama to your to your performance yeah. because it's it's a bit it's quite difficult it's always a fun way to start a concert to kind of show people this is this is what we're dealing with with the organ i think mm. well i think it's also in a way um informing the audience you know because because if you like me i don't know much about the organ and, and something like that really intrigued me and to think oh okay you know you you, you didn't think that that is possible yeah, I think I think that's a lot of what I'm trying to do with well doing these quote unquote viral videos on Instagram is to just kind of get people into the fold, so to say that to show yeah. people, oh, this is what we're doing. This is actually an interesting instrument. You know, people are used to going into a church and seeing some pipes and hearing a sound, but the player will be hidden behind the pipes and and, and what I'm trying to do is to kind of invite people in and show that uh, it, it's quite entertaining to see what we're actually doing. Mm -hmm. But now, I'm a girl. I have to ask you about the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> do, you have to, do you have to have special shoes? Yes, you do. You do. I mean, it's uh, it was very weird in the beginning, I remember, because... I'm used to using very male shoes and uh, I had to use these shoes that uh, it's basically dancing shoes. It's standard dancing shoes and they have a large heel and it's, it was so weird when I, I was practicing and then I had to walk off the bench and I was wearing these high heels. I felt like, and I <laughs> felt like I couldn't, couldn't walk, but you need to have some shoes that have uh, a thin sole so you can feel what you're doing behind your feet 
And you also need to have shoes that have a heel because you can play a note with your heel and also play a note with your toes at the same time. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Okay, so that's why you have to have that. Yeah. That little, so yeah. you can kind of play with your toe. And then if you have a heel, you can play with that also. And then the note in the middle will not be struck, basically. Oh, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. It's also, if you want to play a third with one foot, you can do that like da, da. You can kind of go from one note to the other. Um, okay. So it's, 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 quite, it's quite important. I mean, some people will be religiously opposed to organ shoes and they will say, I play in bare feet and I play in socks. And mm -hmm. I've met people who play difficult repertoire just uh, in socks. But uh, this is what works for me. And uh, oh, okay. especially when I'm playing like difficult repertoire, sometimes mm -hmm. I play stuff where I have to play four notes with the feet at a time, mm -hmm. and then the shoes help a lot. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, because I think uh, socks get. I can imagine it can be slippy on the notes. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I think slippery is is all right, but I think I what you get with a shoe is also the feeling of stability. So. <laughs> If I'm playing with my toes on the keys, then the, the toes kind of need to carry the weight of, of, of the pressing the key. If I have a shoe on, the shoe kind of supports me. I also remember a competition where one of my, uh, one of the other people, uh, he was just one of those guys who played in socks and he, he had to walk in front of the judges and the audience in socks. And bow oh, and then sit by the organ and play and that's just a bit <laughs> awkward honestly yeah but um so you say it's, it's basically dancing so shoes so there's not a shoe that is made specifically for playing organ it's you, you can have get to, those you have to figure yeah, out like, what you okay yeah i think you can get shoes that are made for playing the organ but it's just a, a dancing shoe that's a bit like okay. modified a bit honestly not a lot i think it's it's made by a company called organ master and i have one of those pairs and it's fine it works well but my old dancing shoes work just just as fine honestly so uh, yeah you just you just need to have those well if if you're so coordinated and uh, well coordinated and you have the dancing shoes already are you a good dancer absolutely not I am really? I'm, I'm horrible and I think I think it, it just I think it comes down to to the person I am honestly I I'm a okay. guy who who always like read books and uh, kind of you know love is, is escapism I love watching television that shows like a fantasy world you know like stranger things or game of thrones and other people in my family just enjoy watching real people do real stuff I think I did, I've always enjoyed being in my head. And like, I think that that kind of went together with like not wanting to dance. And I think that's just <laughs> kind of stayed with me. And people always ask, oh, and people comment on, like I have one video that has just a lot of views, a lot of comments and people comment, oh, you must be an amazing tap dancer. <laughs> no, yeah. sorry, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's a common question that people ask. Absolutely. Yeah. Because you see that and it, it is absolutely dancing on the keys. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, you use your whole body and you can tie yeah. it and, and so on. But uh, And it, it can be an, a great workout to play a concert. Totally. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but this is what, what was the, going to be the next question because I saw this as well, you know, that it is a lot of, that it's very physical and do you do something to to give you the stamina or is it just by continuously playing that you that you get you know have the stamina i think it's uh i do have the stamina by continuously playing i think but i think that i used to uh, to work out a lot and well a lot i think two three times a week i used to do strength uh, training and then i got a kid and the lockdown happened and uh, I have not worked out since. <laughs> I, I I do love the kid and I would not 
trade uh, him for anything. Uh, yeah. But I do think that when I used to work out, I got a bit less, like I never got tired in my back or anything like that. Sometimes I do that when I'm preparing a concert now and I'm practicing for a lot of hours. Sometimes I do get a bit tired. And uh, mm-hmm. so I know like there's, there's a definite cure that I can turn to and that is just working out. I think, I think honestly, that part of being a musician, like any kind of musician is, is totally, it's totally underlooked. Like when I went to uh, study in, in Denmark and in, 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 in Germany, it, it wasn't something we talked about a lot. And I think, honestly, we should all have gone to strength training classes, like in the morning or something together, just to kind of get, get our bodies awake and uh, nimble and all that stuff. Because I think only playing the instrument doesn't doesn't really do enough. Yeah. Especially if you want to be playing in like 40 years, 50 years, you know, you do see a lot of uh, organists. I can show you, uh, I have another camera here because I wanted to set this, this up very nicely. Uh, some, some organists and you'll see them playing like this. Yeah. Because they're just so tired in their backs and they, they don't have the strength. Mm-hmm. And I... I, I, I don't want to be like that. So at some point I will get it together and start working out, I think. Well, I, you, you hear it also with violinists, you know, that they develop a physical problems because, because of the way they hold the violin and the way they're playing. And, um, and I'm, I'm sure pianists, I'm sure, like you say, it's, this should be something that, um, you know, should be part of the training and and part of or, or the awareness at least you know because we think of the in, we think if we think of of musicians we don't see that physical or understand or realize that physical part of it but it is yeah and we always strive to to make it look easy right when you exactly, when you've yeah. mastered a difficult part it, it it always looks easy if, if you're mm-hmm. at least if you're doing it the right way right i mean and and that's how it's supposed to look but it's like when you watch the olympics it looks so that easy some swimmer is just like jumping and hitting the water with no bubbles at all it looks so easy but it always takes a lot of work mm-hmm. and maybe yeah i think that that's an important conversation to have in the classical yeah. community yeah, definitely. But um, your setup, I'm now intrigued with your setup there because you said you had another camera. But do you? Uh, how do you practice at home? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. Actually, I like, people always get surprised. Like, I have no keys at home. I have no keyboard. I have no organ. Really? So, actually, I used to have uh, a, a digital organ, but it, it was old and bad. <laughs> I didn't oh, okay. really like it. And then I sold it. And, and now since I, I have a job, I've been here for a few years now in Aarhus in, in a very nice neighborhood called Risco, where I'm the organist in that church. I can just go here and practice whenever I want, basically. So okay. I just do that. And it, it, it's kind of nice, you know, like as a musician, you, you always dream of going to work and then working and then going home and not working. Uh, yeah. And I can actually kind of do, <laughs> that. do I, that. I go here and I, I practice and maybe some people v- will be vacuuming the floors or whatever, but it, it'll be pretty quiet and, and easy for me to work. And, okay. and that's what I do. And then when I'm touring and playing concerts, I always try and book a lot of hours, like just know that I have the whole evening, the whole night, morning, whatever for, for practice. So I know, I have the time to get to know the instrument and so on. Okay. Yeah. Now the type of uh, the, the type of concerts that you do because it's it's almost um, uh, what I would expect that you play in the in the church as well. But if, if you say you you're touring, and you're doing concerts. Where do you normally do these concerts? Well, the obvious answer in Denmark because we have. 2200 churches is wow. to to play in churches and we have i don't know three four five probably just uh three concert halls with organs so and and those are hard, harder to get into in my experience so i i've played the uh, the like, like cathedrals and uh, larger city churches and i also played concerts in quite small churches 
to to you know also also show show like uh, organists in small towns and and people who live in small towns that oh this small tiny organ can actually do some really interesting things even mm-hmm. though you didn't thought it could do that maybe so i actually i try to go everywhere i'm i'm going to la sagrada familia in barcelona in uh, july and playing there and uh, i'm going to ankara in October and playing in the concert hall there. And then this summer I'm playing in a lot of, a lot of small churches all over Denmark. That's so interesting. Um, but, uh, tell me now that yours, you said you have a son. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and how He's is a, he, is he intrigued with the organ? I think so when he was uh, before he was born my my girlfriend and i went on a, a tour well, i went on a tour and i dragged her with me and i played i think 14 concerts during a month or so in denmark and she was with me the whole time and i think he listened he was definitely listening and 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 like rocking with the beat <laughs> and and enjoyed that i think uh, when he, whenever I'm, I'm playing, like he's usually not uh, in there when I play a concert. You oh, know, he's okay. 20 months old. Oh, he's, yeah. he's usually at home sleeping or, or or whatever. But whenever he hears me play, he he goes, "Oh, that's interesting!" and starts like moving his head and really? he like points at me and goes, "Oh, daddy!" Um, mm. Sometimes. So uh, I think I think he definitely likes the sound. I I kind of hope that he got like kind of primed to listening to the organ uh, yeah. before he was born. Since we went on this great tour, um, I, yeah, I believe, and, I believe absolutely that 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 is possible and that, that that is true. And maybe that you know that because you've got such a love and enthusiasm for the organ that he would actually have that as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, uh, I think it's, um, I, I don't have like any dream of him doing like exactly what I'm doing. So I think mm-hmm. I'll try and make him try things and see what he likes and not, yeah. not try to force him to do anything. But um, he's, he's, he's going to see a lot of organs. I think, I think we're going to go on a lot of like, oh, um, that is playing in Venice. Uh, you, 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 let, let's go together or something like that. Oh, I yeah. think it's, it's definitely yeah. going to happen. So I think he'll, he'll have to get used to organs. <laughs> he'll have a great um, appreciation, I think, for that. Yeah. But now, um, Jana, do, do you have a specific... Um, uh, composer that you prefer to play or is there a, a music that you that's really you know your thing yeah it's that's a good question i i've played a lot of mendelssohn um i've played all he mendelssohn has written uh, six organ sonatas and i've i've played all of those and really like those so he's kind of I, I really love Mendelssohn, but I also, and it, it's a very stereotypical answer for organists, but I really do like Bach. <laughs> oh, really? It's, uh, mm-hmm. Bach's music is always extremely difficult to play, I think, but it's it's also always rewarding. Um, and then Liszt, I, I, I love Liszt. I love the way he does harmonics, and there's, there's an organ piece called... Uh, Fantasy and Fugue on Ad Nos is, I would say, the short title. It's it's around 30, 35 minutes, the piece. I've played that a lot. And it's amazing because he takes one theme and then just the whole piece is monothematic. He just uses that and develops it from minor to major at the end. It's just such, it's it's like a whole whole travel, you know, how it feels to play a, a longer piece. You kind of feel like you're traveling along with the piece, going on a journey. So, but it's, uh, this sounds long. I mean, 30 minutes, you say. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I played it, I played this, this like finishing recital when I finished my studies in the end of 2019. And I played this list piece and then I played an organ symphony that takes half an hour and then I played a 20 minute piece as well so yeah that was uh, 
no, I, I just I just really like those those pieces, honestly, where you have this really like I feel like it's it's a very you have this development, you have time to, to really get into it. But on the other hand, I don't play those pieces for all my concerts because I know everybody will not be prepared to listen to a piece that long. Oh yeah. Mm. But so no, some okay. concerts it's mm. yeah, some concerts it's about showing people all about the organ and then sometimes you are part of a festival and you are invited and you know that the audience will be a bit more into stuff like that. Oh, I see. Okay. But now, um, are there a lot of contemporary works for, for organs? Yeah. Yeah, there are. Um, there are a lot of, of, of people writing for the organ. And uh, I mean, I, I, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bit of a conservative when it comes to what I'm playing. I I, I feel like uh, I've just always enjoyed the old masters, um, but I've played some uh, some uh, some new music, for instance, by Rachel Long, who's a Canadian uh, uh, composer and organist, and she kind of kind of uses the French style from the 20th century, kind of adds on to that to, to get like a tonal language that's not totally new but also not totally you know the old the same uh, we're used to from the romantic period i really like those kind of composers who kind of use use the old stuff and and like not not forgets everything we've we've learned you could say but um is it possible to for example take works from other composers that's not necessarily written for the organ and arrange that for the organ oh yeah yeah definitely um there are some some pieces will there will be transcriptions by the composers for instance like i've paired spiegel im spiegel i believe there's a, a version for organ and uh, and a lot of other pieces you, you you can transcribe and kind of change them to work for the organ. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's uh, I, I mean Ennio Morricone when he died, I, I played uh, Gabriel's oboe for the organ um, really? for a concert as a as a tribute to him. Like you know, you, you go up to an organ and there's an oboe stop and you pull that and then you use that for the solo line. Um, so I've done stuff like that. Uh, I've also played, you know, uh, entire orchestra pieces uh, transcribed for the organ, for instance, the Overture to Tannhäuser by Wagner. I've played that on the organ, which is, you know, you sit and you have the violins going in, in one hand and you have uh, the beat in, in, in part of the other hand and then you have the melody in the thumb on another manual. So you're kind of playing one keyboard with these fingers and then one keyboard with that finger and playing the melody. Amazing. Which is, it's like you kind of have to split your brain to play uh, <laughs> symphonic stuff like that. You, you just to, to kind of really show everything that's yeah. going on. So yeah, it's, uh, it's always, I think it's always more work to play orchestral transcriptions on the organ. It's, it's always difficult. Um, but piano pieces and, and stuff like that, you can you can usually more easily make make that work on the organ. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. This is so interesting. And um, but tell me now, what are your wishes for the future? Well, I think, I mean, apart from you know uh, having having a good life, being being a happy person, uh, having uh, good friends around me, I think my 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 wishes for what I'm doing with the organ is that I can show more people that the organ is interesting. I can show people who don't know what it is, uh, what it looks like, or what it sounds like, that uh, this is an interesting instrument and hopefully get them to, to go to organ concerts. I think that's, um, that's a lot of what I'm working on. Yeah, and that's why I have this, you know, the setup. I'm just using the gear I use for my concerts um there up, up there i have the big wide angle camera that i use for my my face my hands the manuals and this camera i use usually for the feet and then i mix it all up with this uh, video switcher so uh, 
Yeah, it's it's quite a quite an arrangement when Amazing. I go to play, yeah. and I sp I spend you know I try to spend like thirty minutes putting up the equipment, and then the rest of the time to actually play the organ because I don't but want to be, you yeah, know but, how it ends up. You're like you're your own technician, and you just spend all your time on on that. Yeah, but but so if if somebody comes and and to one of your concerts, do you have this visual then there that so that they can see what you do? Yes, I have a, a 200 inch, inch screen in, yeah. in the middle of the church, usually in front of people and, and a laser projector that shows uh, the camera image live of me playing. So I, 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 like almost all my concerts, I do that and I bring all the stuff with me. Uh, I have like a, a certain way I pack it and then I fit it in my car and kind of go on tour. Okay, but but this is amazing because it, it's like you say it it um, it makes this visual that you that you give and and seeing what you're doing, this is all part of it. I think part of it's also I think the listening, the hearing. But like you say, it's not you being hid away somewhere, um, and and you, you know you don't see it. If yeah, some from some purists, there can be a knee-jerk reaction where people will be scared. Oh, but won't this take focus away from the music or something like that? But I think what I've what I've realized, for instance, for my for that aforementioned concert where I played in the symphonic hall and I played from one for one and a half hours, I had a screen besides me, but people could also see the the spieltisch uh, where I'm playing. Mm -hmm. And and nobody said that they were annoyed by the screen. I've never had people being critical of that. And mm -hmm. I think it, it just, it puts the organ, it puts us organists and the organist instruments on par with, for instance, violinists and, and pianists who can stand on a stage and we can clearly see what they're doing. Um, we have to do tricks like that to show people what we're doing, because if not, then we'll just be hidden and as, yeah. as my girlfriend's friend said when she was dragged into a concert I played in Copenhagen. But where am I supposed to look? Uh, you know, well, where yeah. are you supposed to look? Like before I was I was not using that equipment at the time and she was just looking at the root positive and the pipes going, oh, well, they're not moving. It's... Yeah. <laughs> and I remember as a kid watching Wilde Frank play in the local symphony orchestra hall, like how amazing it was to see uh, a player close and see what they're doing and i think it's like that experience i want to recreate that when people mm -hmm. go to my concerts well it's also your the the way you perform that i think is also you know your expression behind the the organ not just in the music but but you know that living uh, or seeing that how you interpret it also with your body and and like you say it is a very physical thing that you do no, I think it's a it's a wonderful um, idea that you have, and um, and uh, you know to bring it this way because it's a performance. You know, it's uh, this whole thing is a performance thing. Absolutely, yeah. I think somebody like like Cameron Carpenter, for instance. Uh, have you have you heard of him? He, he's an organist. No, I haven't. Uh, Cameron Carpenter, he tours with his own digital instrument and puts that up where he's playing along with speakers. So this is maybe his way of solving that problem of how to see what we're doing. And I think my way of solving that problem is to, when I'm playing an organ that's totally hidden from people, then to, to actually just show them a picture of what I'm yeah. doing. And, yeah. and everybody everybody comments on it. Everybody thinks it's it works great and uh, it's just it's a way of of getting the audience more into what i'm doing but what i also do is for instance that i i do a lot of improvisation when i'm playing concerts and i ask people uh, to bring me their melodies their themes what they're thinking about their favorite songs stuff like that really? and then i just yes i just on the spot go down and get some pieces and then i just put those together into improvisations and for every Maybe I'll do two improvisations in a concert and for each improvisation, I'll maybe have two, three different themes I've gotten from the audience. And, and so they, they go home and they, they have seen a concert, they've seen what's happening, they've been entertained, but they've all also heard their own music. They have had a choice yeah. in what's been happening. So it's just not, 
it not it's not just one way you could say what what's happening and i think this is very important as well because i think we have this also uh, make this connection then you know because music i think is <clears throat> very much also an emotional connection and if you allow that to say in a concert then you also open up that that connection you know with people i think this is great yeah yeah absolutely brilliant idea but but do people bring you a request that you so you you just know everything you can play everything well that's that's the thing <laughs> uh, obviously i don't know everything so that that can be an issue so okay. when i began doing this i said and please raise your hands if you have something you'd like to hear and if i don't know it please be prepared to sing it <laughs> and though nobody raised their hands so that was a <laughs> bad way to do it i think i've realized i should i should not like ask anything of people that they are uncomfortable with yeah. so what i do now is that i just kind of do a disclaimer oh if you if you typically if people say and and usually it's a joke because who comes to an organ concert well it's it's grown-ups like one kid and and some old people uh, like it is it's quite usual when i go to some rural area so <laughs> there might be somebody saying oh i want this by snoop dogg but i usually say hey if, if you if you mention some rap or something like that that does not work i mean something that's primarily rhythm and i don't know it that doesn't work even if i do know it but everything that's melodic and i do know a lot i mean sometimes i'll go to somewhere where oh they they are very religious and they know these certain pieces you know you have these certain pieces you always know in that part of the country and i don't know that and that's always a shame Okay. But usually I, I know because I know like every Danish hymn, I know it by heart. I know the harmonization and yeah, it's, I've done it. I've done it a lot, you know, and, and I've, I've learned to, oh, if I don't bring sheet music, I can still play a whole service because I remember all the hymns by heart, basically, Brilliant. because I've been mm. in the church so much and not much and. And that, that experience goes together with my training in improvisation and my training in, in harmony. And I've also spent a lot of energy on ear training. All that kind of goes together. And I can kind of use that uh, in concert situations because I can react immediately. If, if a phone starts beeping, then I can add that tune, you know, or whatever really? i can add that to what i'm doing just i can react immediately and 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 yeah i think that that feels great because yeah it's it's a big part of me doing that and and, and using that and, and entertaining people with it and also creating art is, is a great feeling but but do people ask say popular music like great balls of fire for example oh yeah i mean no, I've, I've had uh when they uh what is it uh, yeah when uh, oh not uh, yeah the doors i've been asked about to play some the doors when the music's over i believe i've played um uh, what's the name um that's a song based on bach's ear basically uh <laughs> well some rock music from oh, uh oh, from yeah, this, yeah, yeah yeah you I know have, what i mean yeah i know what you mean exactly. but i can't also yeah. remember the name yeah i've yeah. played that i've played uh louis armstrong what a wonderful world really um, oh, and then wow. you played somebody once asks for you to play it at a funeral and then the next time somebody asks for it at a concert you remember it oh. um i've played a lot of uh concerts for kids some of those videos i've posted were recorded in the concert hall where i played some uh, concerts for kids and i i was practicing and making these videos and then the day after the kids came and they always ask for the same stuff it's like um they want to hear harry potter they want to hear a uh, lot of maybe sometimes lord of the rings or something like that um well, you're and star wars oh, you're and, I, and, and then you play that at, a few times and then you know it <laughs> but you've probably seen all those movies yeah 
I have, and and uh, I've heard. Oh, and and then you know, some some. I've probably listened to an organ transcription on YouTube, and then, uh, um. And then I know the melody, and maybe I don't play the exact right harmonies, but uh, I I kind of hit it in the ballpark, and yeah, that yeah. works. <laughs> I think for people who make this request, this, if it sounds familiar, then it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, that's how it is, right? If if you if you listen to some, it's a bit like you listen to to some composer's version of a folk tune, you know, like. Uh, Dvorak or, or whoever does something with folk tunes, and and you know you use them in a way that's that's different than how people usually use them, and you you make it sound in your own way, but it, you can still recognize the theme. Yeah. But um, Jonas, this this was so lovely to talk to you about all this, and um, um, I'm I'm a great follower of your of your page on on Instagram. I hope I get to see you in concert one day. Sure, yeah. I'll uh, I'll I'll tell you when I'm when I'm close by. That would be fun. In Vienna, definitely, yeah. But yeah. before I just have one last question for you. Can you do a shout out for your favorite restaurant or coffee shop there in Denmark? Oh, totally. I mean, don't don't even begin asking me about about coffee and my expensive grinder and my heat exchanger machine. Um, uh, I'll just I, blab on for hours. But I will tell lover? you, oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I make uh, espresso every morning. Um, mm-hmm. But I think uh, one 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 place that's quite well known outside of Denmark is La Quebra. Yeah. Which is uh, it's a co- coffee roastery, and they also have a shop, a cafe, uh, and and they they sell coffee. So that is great, and mm-hmm. the they are located in Aarhus, and in Aarhus we also have um, Stiller's Coffee, and San Stiller is one of uh, the most famous roasters in the whole world, and he's he's won competitions around really? latte art and roasting all over the world. So Stiller's Coffee. I would recommend and La Capa, definitely. Oh, okay. I'll put the link in the description of the two places. Yeah. Cool. Okay. But Jonas, have a lovely um, day and um, and let me know when you're in Vienna. We can go for a coffee and I'll come and visit you and I'll come and watch your concert. Oh, yes. And you can you can meet my son. He's very cute. Oh yes, oh, I would love to. I would love to. Twenty months. If he's twenty months now, then he's at a very a sweet and cute age. Oh, it's absolutely. When they, it's when they're twenty five that you start um, uh, thinking a bit different. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. Like it, it's not going to be easier. <laughs> like, <laughs> but cool. It's lovely to talk to you. Yeah, it's lovely. No, but I always thought when always when I see somebody with a child that's in a in a push chair, I always think, oh, how wonderful! You still know where they are, you know. <laughs> you don't, you don't, you don't have to pick them up in the middle of the night when they call you. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, Jonas, but thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.